Hi, my name is Mark Selabuski from Trinic. Today we're going to demystify processing concrete countertops, wall panels, whatever you want to apply it to. This will actually apply to polished floors as well. We'll explain why you're taking a step to how you arrive at a certain finish and why you're doing it. It's very important because the why has a lot to do with your sealer and your eventual success and the finishing one. The first piece I'd like to, to talk about processing is what I call a perfect off the form finish. Now this piece is a, uh, is a face coat mix basically that's been sprayed and we kept spraying and spraying. We did this as to, test our, uh, to test our GFRC ad mix. You can see it's, it's about a little less than 3 eighths thick just to see if it would uh, get any plastic shrinkage or map cracking. You can see it didn't. We were we poured this one in a pan, a plastic pan, which meant there's no caulk line, which you can deal with. And there was no leakage and everything worked that day. You know, everything came out nice. So if we had a piece like this, we'd want to do minimal processing. You want to do something. It comes out of that mold, it's got a little bit of residual form oil, maybe a little wax, maybe a little caulk residue. So if you don't want to expose anything, you start with a Scotch-Brite. You can use clean water with a little bit of a, say, simple grain or something like that to wash it. Or what I prefer is a 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 acid. I would start with a 20 to 1 acid, that's what this is, and really work it into the surface, scrub it. What you're watching for is you're watching to see if any cream is removed. I'm not seeing any, minimal. So you're not gonna affect the appearance of it too much. You're also lowering the uh, pH of your concrete, which is important later. It actually helps in later sealing steps. So 20 to one, I know I'm safe. You can go up to 10 to one, depending on the look you want, and just scrub it. Now once I scrub it, I would use, I would rinse it well with water, and then I would use a 10 to one ammonia wash to neutralize everything. You don't need to be in a hurry for that. Like I said, this, the concrete's pH peaks like 13, so you're, you're actually taking away any acid producing stuff. This is very acid resistant because it was poured with silica fume. That's it. Rinse, 10 to 1 ammonia, let it sit for a minimum of a day in a lower humidity environment, and you're ready to start sealing. After I've done this, I can seal with uh, either Nano Seal, which would get a bite now, or SB. SB you can use on any concrete as long as it's clean, it doesn't matter. Nano Seal requires a little bit of bite, that's what we just did with acid. And that's it for processing. Next piece we'll cover is uh, an off the form finish, but it has a melamine texture to it. This is a, what I would call a flawed off the form finish. We didn't take time with our caulk joint. This is a sample we made just to test sealers. But we caulked, we didn't wait for it to cure and then cover it with tree wax. If you caulk very carefully, wait for the caulk to cure, cover it with tree wax, you'll get rid of all this. We also uh, formed this on melamine. You can see there was either flaw in the melamine here and there causing that or else we got careless with caulk and a little got over. But the process, this piece, you could use the acid 10 to 1, or you could just use a little bit of water. You can see it's almost uh, waterproof. But this is 600 grit wet dry sandpaper. You do it wet so that it cleans the sandpaper as you're sanding. Now this really isn't, you could do a whole kitchen in probably 20 minutes. You just flip the paper if you feel it not sharp anymore. And you can look to see I'm starting to see a little bit of salt and pepper. You can see I am removing some material, but not a lot. The 600 grit is very mild. This will also expose if you happen to have any bug holes. This piece, I can't actually see any bug holes except where the caulk caught the air a little bit. That's it, now it's gliding. Once it starts to glide, the surface has gotten even, and uh, further sanding really doesn't do a whole lot. I removed a little material, not a whole lot. Wipe it down, 
you would patch any bug holes obviously to fix it up. But this piece, let it sit for a day. You could use either Nano Seal or SB on it, and that's it, you're done. I really do like the uh, off the forms and the slight cleaning because it's just much less processing. You're not spending all day grinding. If you're going to polish and grind, you should get paid for it. Now this next piece we'll talk about is an exposed glass piece. Now if anyone needs a uh, glass mix design, just email us, or call us, and uh, we'll give you one. This particular piece has a couple different colors of glass in. This is all glass, meaning the sand is actually glass too. You don't need to do that. You can substitute white uh, silica sand for the finer sand and you'll do fine. But this requires a lot of processing and an understanding of your concrete strength when you're processing. When you start to get into processing deeply ground things, it could be a, a glass mix, it could be an exposed stone mix, whatever, that's when you really need to understand what's happening with your concrete and how to get it to take a polish without failing. What you're doing when you're polishing is real simple. This is obviously not the scale, but if this is a grain of sand, this is your current height, this is the height you wanted at, when you run your polisher, you're shaving off this grain of sand. So you're leaving half a grain of sand in, you're shaving the other half off. If your concrete is able to hold this grain of sand in place, it will take a polish. If your concrete is not able to hold this grain of sand in place, this grain of sand pulls out, the grain of sand actually goes under your polishing pad and turns a, let's say a, a, a 200 grit into a 10 grit and it scores the rest of it pulling out more grains of sand. If your concrete is hard enough, it will shave this grain of sand off and all the other grains, big, little, indifferent, and you'll come up with a flat surface. When people say my concrete won't take a polish, it's 90% of the time because it's not hard enough. Now hard enough, uh, for regular concrete, about 4,000 PSI to take a good polish. For a glass mix, glass is harder to hold because there's nothing to grip. The sides are very hard to grip. I would say 5,000 plus. Now, everyone says, well, why not grind it at 10,000? The answer, the answer is very simple. It's very hard to grind 10,000 psi concrete. Some of our mixes are in the 12 or 14,000 psi range. Now, 14,000 PSI is approaching granite. Granite is anywhere from 10 to 20,000 PSI. So in effect, you're telling me you're gonna to try to grind granite down an eighth to a quarter inch to expose the glass. That's gonna be very hard to do. The key is getting to know your concrete. This, this could happen in seven days, or it could happen in 12 hours. So when you grind, depends on the temperature. The hotter it is, the quicker it happens. You'll know if you cannot, if you can't grind it, it's probably, you know, up here. If the sand or glass grains are pulling out, well, maybe it's only 2,000 PSI. That you would cut and gouge in when you went to grind it. So it's, it's you discovering how hard your, your concrete is. With Trinix Ad Mixtures, we're able to hit this figure with ease overnight, this one with ease overnight. Usually we're, eh, you can hit 7,000 fairly easily overnight. But that requires heat. If you don't have heat, don't grind the next day. We'll show you all the steps it takes, but basically every time you go with a different grit, you can keep going, but there's no need to. You start with maybe a 20 grit, metal bond. This is just a straight up cutting tool. The diamonds are embedded in metal so that they'll cut and the metal wears away and the diamonds cut. It's meant for hard, harder concrete. Soft concrete, this would eat right through. But it's probably about a 20 grit, maybe even a 10. So it's like we talked about yesterday when we poured this sucker, we poured a grout mix here. Why? Because we didn't want to see it. We wanted to have a vein running through it. 
So now I, I can't just grind that to expose the rocks. I have to grind everything to make it flush. Mm -hmm. So then I'll take this down and I'll feel my way out to here and try to make everything level. Yeah, that's not And you that thought much. it was going to be harder to grind because of the, the PSI of the concrete, correct? Well, the tail will come when we try to get it to polish. Okay. So when we try to get it to a 200, well, no, it's not polishing. It's not, well, it's probably your concrete's not hard enough, which is okay because you patch buckles, come back the next day, grind it to 200 and you're done. But that's why we did what we did yesterday, so it would look cool. Now you've got interest. Yeah, it'll look cool. It'll look like, hey, that's a vein somebody found. Very nice. This is why you don't use this on regular concrete, because this has got a, I don't know, a 16th of an inch of chatter marks. So you've got to go to 50, 100, 200 to get all this out. So you start with what you need. Okay. Then you end there. That's a flex machine, you said? Yeah. Okay. It's a variable speed. Variable speed means that the motor has to be bigger. Because if you run an electric motor at a low speed, they don't like to do that. Mm -hmm. So they get super hot. So they have to be over designed to take the torque. You buy a cheap one, you try to run this, you're done. You can see I was on one leg almost putting all of my weight on it, yet I can't bog down the motor. That's great. Yeah, and I would highly recommend buying these. For what we do, the spray gets in the brushes, it ruins your motor. With this, it helps a lot. But I'll do, uh, I'll probably, let me do a little bit of that just to show you. They have to be careful because the rocks are a lot of times softer than the concrete. So they're easier to uh, throw up. I keep going until I feel everything getting level. Next you go to a 50 grit. Now the 50 grit will get out the scratch pattern that 20 left. And then you go with 100. That gets out the scratch pattern that the 50 left and on down the line. You don't need to go above somewhere this range, 4 to 800. If I had a good hard concrete and I wanted a matte finish and I was using nano seal, and I had, say, 7,000 plus concrete, I would stop at 200. Nano Seal will hide the blends, especially matte, that a 200 grit leaves. If I had soft concrete, maybe I would cheat a little because I know how to cut a lot. I'd catch it the next day around 4,000. Maybe I'd go for 20, maybe I'd go to 50, and then I would uh, patch the buck holes, wait a couple days or a day, throw heat back on it. You're then get it up to here, 7,000, okay, you're good. You can get it up to 200 or 400 pounds. Here's an example of a top that uh, required a lot of processing. This top we would have started with the 10 grit solid metal to cut down through and get it pretty even. And then we would have worked our way up through the grits. We'd have gone from uh, 50, 100, 200. This particular top was taken to 200. After that, we used a SB sealer. You can see it's a coffee coffee bar and there's no coffee stains, no scratches. It's uh, holding up fairly well. them to 7,000 or so, I wouldn't grind until they were right in here. That way my glasses are going to pull out, everything's going to stay in the same plane, and I can go 20, 50, 100, 200, I'd probably stop at 400, 4 to 600, somewhere in that range. And I could do all that in the same day, maybe uh, I'd go to 200, then I'd fill the buck holes, let it sit overnight, go to 4, the next day, wham, you're done, that's it. Now this costs a lot more money than just doing off the form finish, obviously. We'll show you the different machines that uh, you can purchase to do it. Once you decide you want to grind deep, 
or even medium, you're going to need to buy a grinder. I like water-fed grinders such as these two. They feed water down through the center of the spindle that comes out here, washes away the cuttings, keeps the pad clean, and uh, you don't breathe the dust. This is a uh, 5 inch, this is a 7. Both of these are flex. I like flex because you can rebuild them. One of the things I've learned years and years ago was to use these uh, covers over top because it saves them and they last a long time. You just replace the cover when, when it gets worn. This one will turn a 7 inch disc. Now I like this for initial cutting. If you've got to cut a lot, this works great and they, they last a good long time. Once you're done cutting, we've got sources, if you call us or email us, we'll tell you where to buy these inexpensively. I found, that, I found a source for inexpensive pads that actually works quite well. I think they're $15 or something a piece and they last long enough once you learn your concrete. These, once you cut it with this, you're going to march your way through. You can use a 7 inch and continue or you can go with a 5 inch if you're good at it to do it. You'd start here, go with 50, 100, 200, 400, done. And then the sealer would take care of the rest. Now as an option to that, you can purchase these three headed jobbers. Now everyone purchased these when they first came out and they proved to not be that reliable. They're a lot of money for what you're doing but they do work well. These with metal rigid pads on the bottom will ensure a nice flat surface. The higher the grit the more you want rigid rather than flexible because you're not flexing in anything. Different backer pads have different amounts of rigidity. This one is slightly flexible, which doesn't hurt. It's good for cutting. You can ride up over it and then hit the valleys. An option to this machine that I found works very well for me. I discovered these. These are called dimer brushes. They're meant to fit on the bottom of a floor buffer. As you'll see in this next clip, you can buy a floor buffer on Craigslist for 150 bucks. Buy these, I think these are $400 for each grit, but each grit lasts between five to 20,000 square feet. They're cool, they're flexible, they'll ride over anything, even and out. They won't cut glass open. But once you have it opened and cut, these on the bottom of a floor buffer work fantastic. They make them in grits from 50, they make them to 3,000, you won't need 3,000. Then they make them in sizes from 12, this one's an 18 inch. These work quite well for, for large projects that you want to eat through quickly. And in the end, they're a lot less money than buying all the pads, all the grinders, everything else. The other thing you need is hand pads. These come in a variety of grip, grits as well. If you call or email, we found these I think for $12 each from a reputable source and we'll let you know where that is. But uh, these will finish edges for you. They come in two, four hundred, any, any grit you want really. And they last a long time. You won't go through them. I probably wouldn't do the whole piece with one just because I found wet dry sandpaper with more surface area works better. One of the other tricks we'll show you is to use a 3 inch backer pad with a worn 5 inch, five inch uh, disc. What it does is it, it gets flexible and as it's turning it will go and hit the corners of sinks. You'll see in this next clip we'll actually do the whole sink inside with this. It's a good trick to have. You just wait, don't throw these out when they're almost worn out because they get more flexible. You can do the insides of sinks especially if there's deep exposure.